Why the long face, junk man? Because I don't want to grow up. Why don't you want to grow up? Because I'm a Toys R Us kid. What's so special about Toys R Us? They got millions of toys at Toys R Us that I can play with. So what? Walmart has toys. They got the best for so much less. It'll really make you flip your lid. Oh yeah? What do they have that's so special? From bikes, to trains, to video games. It's the biggest toy store there is. Gee whiz. But what's so bad about growing up? Because maybe if I grew up, then I could no longer be a Toys Us kid. You know, now that I think about it, I want to be a Toys Us kid too. Now you're with me, Larry Wumpa. High five. Toys Us is closing down this North American stores and UK stores. And in other words, Toys Us is going the way of KB Toys. It's going away for good. And it's the last of the toy chain retailers. What do kids look forward to now? Walmart, Target, just regular department stores. There's no more toy chains anymore. There's no KBs. There's no Lionel Play World. There's no FAO Swartz. Sure, you might have one or two stores in a major city like New York or LA, but overall, the toy store as we know it, as people like me and you grew up with, is over. And although I'll admit I didn't really buy a lot of stuff at Toys R Us in the last couple of years, it's sad to see because Toys R Us meant a lot to me. And I'm not just talking about when I was a kid. In fact, I don't even remember Toys Us really that much being an influence on me as a child. I mostly shopped, or my parents shopped at Kmart or Zares, if anyone remembers that place. And we didn't have a Toys Us until probably in the mid-80s. I'm thinking around 83, 84. I don't remember ever buying any Star Wars items there except for one thing. I remember my dad taking me out of the blue to the Toys R Us. It wasn't like a grand opening or anything. I'd already been there, and I've been there many a times, I'm sure, but I just don't remember it. And I had to be probably close to 12, 13. I think I was really starting to get out of the toys, but for some reason, this day or this week, something in me was itching to go to Toys R Us and buy a Star Wars toy. And by this time, I was well into He-Man. I think I was even starting to grow out of He-Man. This was probably a year or two after Return of the Jedi, so I'm going to put it around 84, 85. But my dad took me, which is kind of rare for him just out of the blue to take me to Toys R Us asking. Usually it was my grandma I had to beg to uh, get a free toy. It was not your birthday or Christmas or anything. But I remember he took me there, and I remember looking over the Star Wars toys, and they didn't hardly have anything. But I remember the only thing I could really find within my price range was a speeder bike, the Kenner speeder bike, which I loved, and I think I had or lost by then anyway. But my dad got it for me, and that is my first memory of Toys R Us. I know, that's not really a great memory being that old, but like I said, we didn't have a Toys R Us in my town. I never even heard of it until probably mid-80s. But my real memory of going to Toys R Us started in the late 80s. 87, 88. And it wasn't the action figures that took me to Toys R Us. It was video games, and not just video games, Nintendo video games. And I can still remember walking in the Toys Us. I can see the Toys Us in my town, in my head. I could draw a map of it. First place I would go after they made me do a little maze around, which I learned later in life was called the Action Alley, or the Lobby. They kind of forced me around by the games and stuff, and and you would come up to the glass cases, much like they have now with the video games on the inside. But I remember they had a Nintendo hooked up where you could play it. And by the late 80s, some other systems. I remember playing games in that Toys R Us, even if I had the games at home. It was like a free arcade. And then after kicking around the turtle shells, I would walk down the video game aisle and just look to see what they had. Most of the time, I didn't even have the money to buy anything. You know, I wasn't working then. I was still in school. So if it wasn't Christmas or my birthday or, or some special reason, I didn't get anything. But I would look through the games and see which ones I wanted. That's mostly how we discovered games. Sure, I would buy a magazine every now and then. And at Toys Us, I would do that too. 
at the end of the video run, they would have a magazine rack. You would have a Nintendo Power, of course, and then some other, I think, Game Monthly or something, some other games, and you would look through it, some strategy guides and stuff, and go back and look at the games, and what I love, and I think they still do this today, is you would, the game wouldn't be on the wall, it would be a little piece of paper, take the paper out, take it up to the cashier, she would ring it up, scan it, get on her phone. Yeah, this is really what you need. I need you to bring the Super Mario. Super Mario 3? Yes, 4274872. Thank you. They'll take you at the customer service desk. So then you would pay and walk to the customer service desk. And, you know, about 20, 30 minutes later, a guy would come walking up with the Super Mario 3, or whatever it was in your hand, and give it to you. It was kind of nice. Nowadays, if I had to wait even a minute for him to bring it up to me, I would be furious. But as a kid, I didn't care. It was almost like a small Christmas. Waiting for Santa Claus. This Santa Claus was a, a balding, middle-aged fat man. Well, that is that sounds like Santa Claus too. Maybe that's what Santa Claus did during the summertime. But I kind of love that. And my grandma, who would not know anything about Nintendo games, if I said, go buy me NARC for the NES, she would have no idea what I was talking about. If I said, I really would like to have Time Lords, again, she wouldn't know. So what would I do? Go to the Toys Us. Take the slip of paper out, fold it up, take it home, give it to my grandma. Here you go, grandma. This is the game I want. Take this to the checkout. They'll scan it. Wait 20, 30 minutes, and they'll bring it to you. It was a good way to get your grandma to buy you what you wanted. In fact, I would take for sometimes three or four of them and just give them to my grandma and say, Here, pick one. I don't care which one you pick. I want it to be a surprise for my birthday slash Christmas. I enjoyed that. That was very fun as a probably 15, 16 year old kid really getting into Nintendo. I was uh, really into Nintendo as I, as I guess many of you my, around my age or grew up on Nintendo was. So I have great memories of that. But my memories of Toys Us doesn't end there at the end of my teen years. We're going to kick into a little later, early 20s, fresh out of school, not in college or anything because I was a bum, working some part-time jobs, and I would go with my girlfriend at the time and some other friends to Toys Us. That's what we did on a Friday night at 21, 22. I know most of you was probably going out to the bars, getting drunk, going to college parties, wearing a toga, doing all kinds of things. What did me and my friends do on a Friday night? We would go to Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah, we were some badasses, right? But it was nice. And this is really about the same time, early 90s, 93, 94, when I started collecting star when I started collecting action figures. And I can remember Toys R Us in my hometown was the first place I saw Batman the Animated Series figures. And that was probably my first real collector's series I would buy. I bought about every one of them. I talked about it on a video, which I talked about the whole series. How a friend of mine that owned a comic book store, I would call him up on a payphone at the store, no cell phone, right? Tell him what figures they had. He would tell me what to get, and I would get it. And I would go to this Toys Us probably about every Friday, maybe sometime Friday and Saturday. I don't know why the stock didn't change that much, but we would dig through it. Me and my friends, uh, I would look through stuff, and my girlfriend would stand there looking bored as hell. As I don't blame her now looking back on it. Now, during this collecting time, I had money to waste, so I would buy two or three of the same figure. One to open, of course, one to trade if I needed, one to leave on card, and sometime, I just didn't even know if I had it yet. Yep, that's how big of a collector I was back then. I wouldn't even know if I had a man bat. I would scratch my head. Did I buy that one already? I know I've seen it before. So I'd buy it. So, a couple weeks later, I don't have any money. I want to buy something at Toys Us. They got, let's say, they got an Iceman from the X-Men line in. Kind of rare at the time. What do I do? I take my Man Bat or my extra figure back to Toys Us. Sometimes it would be seven or eight figures. And no receipt. So what would Toys Us do? Jeffrey Bucks. What are Jeffrey Bucks? Well, it looks like dollar bills, but they had Jeffrey on it. It was more like a gift card. You only could spend it in the store. And I would take so much stuff back, I would walk around with a gangster roll with Jeffrey Bucks. And it wasn't just me. I remember going to the comic book store that my friend owned, and almost all of us down there would have a little bit of cash in our pocket 
and a whole lot of Jeffrey Bucks. I can remember being at the comic book store. I'm going to go to Toys Us and see what they got. And somebody would say, hey, if they have this Wolverine I'm looking for, get it for me. Here's five, here's ten bucks in Jeffrey money. It was crazy. To us, back then, it was better than having real money. Sure, I can have ten dollars in my pocket, so what? And ten dollars in Jeffrey bucks? That was better than having cold hard cash. Because then I was forced to buy something at Toys Us with it. If I had cash, I would, I would end up blowing it on my girlfriend or buying some food or something. But not Jeffrey Bucks. Good old Jeffrey Bucks. It had to be spent at Toys R Us. Or traded at the comic book store. Yep, we would even trade them. Oh, you have an extra monkey face Leia? I don't have any cash. You want me to give you $10 in Jeffrey Bucks for it? I'll take 15 Oh, okay, here you go. So I really loved that. It was kind of a crazy time. Like I said, I know most of you was probably out getting drunk, having toga parties in college. But... I was trading Jeffrey Bucks. And then right around this same time, my dream came true. I got a job working for Jeffrey. I got a job, my first job, at Toys R Us. Man, wasn't that great. Some good times. And I've talked about it here before, but I didn't last long. I got fired after a couple of months. One thing, whenever they put me on the cash register, I always came up short. But one time I came up really over. But most of the time I would come up really short. I wasn't good at that cash register. I don't know. I've never been a genius at math. And something about making change. I guess I wasn't good at that. But if you ever bought something at my Toys Us. And I was working the cash register. You just got lucky. Because you're going to get out of there and save some money. But I remember they would move me around. Try to keep me off the cash register as much as they could. I remember one time this guy who looked. In my memory looks like Rick Moranis came down and made me clean the bathroom. And not just mop the bathroom or clean a toilet. He made me scrub in between the cracks of the tile on the floor. Which I don't understand because the store had a janitor. I think they actually had a service come in during the night and clean the whole place. I don't know if it was punishment. I don't know what it was. He didn't yell at me and it wasn't like I got rolled up or was being punished. I just remember I was stocking the shelf, and he said, hey, come here, we need somebody to do this. And he had me, had me plenty of the cracks on the tile floor. Not the tile on the wall, the tile on the floor. What a a-hole. They might tell you I didn't work hard, but I did. But my problem was, most of the time, 95% or more, if I, was stocking the, if I was stocking the store, I was on the action figure aisle. Stocking the action figures. Not just stocking the action figures. The rule was at Toys Us, if you bring a box out, you have to put everything in the box on the shelf or you can't take it out of the back room. So I would have come out, open, a, open up an X-Men box, trying to find Iceman, take out some figures I want, Iceman, Wolverine, put them to the side, take some X-Men on the shelf that's been sitting there for a week, put them back in the case, that way I could put the case in the back room, and that like I worked it out. And I would have in the back room hidden like stacks of Iron Man. Painted Invisible Woman from the Fantastic Four. William Riker figures. Not to be confused with Thomas Riker. All kinds of Batman villains. Anything. If you were a collector and you didn't know me, you weren't going to find it at Toys R Us. Well, that's not really true. Sometimes I would take the rare figure. Again, like Iceman. I don't know why my memory always goes back to Iceman. I would put him right on the front. So people come there would find it. Or sometimes I would put it right there on the front. So, so a collector would know right then and there that they had the Iceman. So I didn't really make it hard for collectors, although my friends did come first. I was like the local crack dealer, but my crack was rare action figures. One per case. If anything was one per case, even if I didn't collect that series, that one figure was getting put in the back. Or held for a friend. Or traded for something else. I swapped out for Jeffrey Bucks. Not saying that's right or wrong, but that's just how it was. But they let me go. I'm guessing mostly because of the cash register. My manager, August Sukarakis, never understood. Crazy name stuck in my head forever. August Sukarakis. Sounds like a fraggle rock villain. But on my exit interview, he told me that I spent too much time talking to my friends. Now, he didn't mean co-workers, because I didn't talk to anybody. And I realized what he meant was other collectors coming in. I tried to play it off, 
I don't know these people. We just get to talking as a customer and a salesman. I'm trying to help you sell these action figures. He didn't buy it, but really, a lot of times, it wasn't friends. It was seeing another collector and they're digging through stuff. And I would ask, what you looking for? Who do you need? Hold on, I got that in the back. Whenever, yes, I put figures in the back, but whenever I saw a collector there and he was looking for something, I would go get it for him. It might be a bad way to think, but back then, the way I thought was, let me make sure this rare one gets to a collector and not to a kid. Which seems kind of messed up now. Kids wanted to put an Iceman in the freezer, watch him change colors. Not just collectors. But that's what I did. So Toys Us fired me. But I did get to go back to Toys Us when I got a retail merchandising job for Hasbro. It was a part-time job, but it got me back into Toys R Us. And this time, none of the managers were my boss. I would come in, stock whatever I wanted to, change out game of the month, and go to Walmart. Stock what I wanted to there. Look through boxes. It was heaven. Did it for about a year. It was great. Because I could dig through boxes, bring stock, move, move stock around. Knew the toy manager at every Walmart, Target, Toys R Us. Every place that sold toys for a year. And not just in my hometown. All the towns around. As the retail merchandiser, I knew the hookup for any toys. And yes, I worked for Hasbro. But believe me, if I was in the back room of a Toys R Us, I would open any action figure box I could to see what was in it. But then let's skip to the end of the 90s and into the 2000s. Toys R Us was the place to go for a new Star Wars. Now some of you know Force Friday, but back then we didn't call it Force Friday. Actually, I think it was on a Sunday night if I remember right, or maybe a Monday. Monday morning? It was on a Sunday night, Monday morning, I believe. The Phantom Menace toys hit Toys R Us. It was chaos. The doors opened at midnight. Dozens of nerds stormed the store, knocking over shelf displays, pushing each other over, trying to get into that Jar Jar Binks. Who was this Jar Jar Binks? Is this the new Boba Fett of the prequels? Of course, the trick was to see how much you could carry out without a basket. Some had it down. Hey, uh, got it, man. Some didn't. I'm the official holder. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but then, Attack of the Clones came out. At Toys Us again at midnight. Revenge of the Sith came out. Midnight back at Toys Us. When Disney bought Star Wars and we got Force Friday for The Force Awakens, where did I go first? At midnight, Toys R Us. Why Toys R Us? It's tradition. That's where you go to buy your toys. Of course, when I was done with Toys R Us, I went over to Walmart and bought some there too. But Toys R Us was awesome. You would walk in on those special days like that, not just with Star Wars, but the whole lobby would be decorated with whatever the new toy they were pushing. As the Phantom Menace, big banner ads, ships hanging from the air, toys all over the place. It was great. It was more than just a toy store. It made me feel like an event like that. And then I got older, had kids of my own. What would we do on a Friday and Saturday night? Same thing I did in my late teens and early 20s. Hang out at Toys R Us. You take your kids in there, Look around, even if you're not buying anything. It was a blast. Just walk up and down the aisles. Look at this, look at that. Oh, look at this toy. You want to buy it? Say yes. So your mom doesn't kill me for buying it for myself. That's the key. It's always easier to buy your kid a toy if it's something you want also. So I had the special memories of being a kid at Toys R Us, a teen in Toys R Us, early 20s at Toys R Us, working at Toys R Us, a young adult collector of Toys R Us, and as a parent, I have fond memories of Toys R Us. And even now, if I'm out somewhere and I come across a Toys R Us, better believe I'm stopping in. I'm going to go in, look around. And that's the problem. Why is Toys R Us closing down? Because like myself and many of you, we would go to Toys R Us, look around, and walk out with nothing. Why? Well, mostly the prices are a little higher, but hey, it's a specialty store. What does the closing of Toys R Us do for its collectors? Sadly, it's going to hurt us more than probably the kids. The kids will still go to Walmart, Target, Kmart, places like that. Where it's going to hurt us collectors are those adult collector toys. Not your standard Star Wars toys. Like those made by NECA. Those that are designed for collectors. Sadly, it's probably going to hurt companies like NECA more than it's going to hurt the big guys like Hasbro and Mattel. Where are we going to go to get those? Well, most of us are going to go to get it online. 
If you're anything like me, there's a lot of these that are aimed for collectors that I want to look at. I want to hold it in my hand before I buy it. Without Toys or Us, I don't get that. Sure, some will end up going to GameStop, where they'll be even higher than Toys R Us, or they might go over to FYE. And we all know what FYE stands for, don't you? Fuck, you're expensive. Because that's what you say every time you go in there. You're going to pay almost double the price for anything in there. But that's about all I had to say. I just kind of wanted to share some memories about Toys R Us. I hate to see it go. Because the bad thing is, there's nothing there to replace it. If Walmart goes away, you have Target. If Target goes away, you have Walmart. There's always a department store. If a clothes store shuts down, you got another clothes store down the road. Might be different, but you still can go look at clothes. This is the last of the major toy store retailers. Where are 20-year-olds going to spend their weekends now? Sad. Anyway, thank you for watching. In the comments below, let me know what you think about the clothes and the toys us. Share some of your memories. And if you weren't there, let me know how you did at the cash register. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Click the links below to support us on Patreon. Buy some cool t-shirts. And head over to StarWarsJunk.net. Me and Larry's gonna go now, and we thank you for watching. Did you buy me with Jeffrey Bucks? <laughs>